it's an early start this morning because we're going by train down to Pamier from where we're going to catch a bus to Mirepoix which was a Cathar stronghold. In 507 the Franks ousted the Visigoths who retreated over the Pyrenees. By this time the area was a wasteland. In 602 the King of the Franks set up military overlordships including a Duke of Aquitaine to bring order to the area but generally continual strife persisted. In addition to the locals fighting each other and the Franks the Arabs swept over the Pyrenees and were later rejected. Vikings or Normans arrived and were eventually ejected. Although Charlemagne's dynasty incorporated the area through vassals, these latter drifted into near total independence. So here we are now on our bus leaving Pamier and heading towards Mirepoix. Now it's one of the joys of travelling in these strange foreign lands that people can't speak English. And when I asked at Pamier railway station where the bus went from that went to Mirepoix, I was told there was no such bus. So I was just about to give up and walk and have a look around Pamier when the bus arrived. As we said, Mirepoix was one of the last strongholds of the Cathars and it was built as a fortified town. Here we are now and later on this afternoon we have to catch the bus back to Pamier and we have to wait somewhere near this cafe on the other side of the road. And it's a lovely sunny day, let's just have a walk round the perimeter before going into the square in the middle. That was one of the entrances to the uh, central fortress. Quick look at the houses in the vicinity. Now along the other side we come up to the church which uh, turns out to be one of those southern gothic churches with a wide nave and no aisles. It was one of those churches which had a machine inside in which you could insert a euro and the lights came on. Now I don't know if this was linked to a, an alarm system but within a few minutes a chap arrived on a bike took his bike clips off and uh, went to play the organ. <clears throat> well not so much play it I thought as demonstrate it and I think he must have assumed I was an American. The Stations of the Cross in this church took the form of these pictures which you can see here. And don't these in this window look rather like Masonic symbols to you? I hope Dan Brown knows about those. Now I quite like to see these churches that have painted walls and uh, other stonework painted like these here. Now apparently this was a common practice in England in the days of the old church.
And so back out into the town, into the edge of the square. This is one of the roads leading to a gate. Is uh, another entrance. And we'll go in down this one. Under the buildings at the end of the street and into the central square. And here's one of those nice ironwork covered markets again. The square is entirely surrounded by these buildings on wooden pillars, half timbered buildings. In 1209 there were recorded 600 Cathars in this town when our friend Simon de Montfort arrived. In 1279 the place was swamped when a dam burst and it was recited to its present position. Now then, it's a nice warm day, time for a sit down and a coffee I think. Observe the local life. In 1355, during the Hundred Years' War, the Black Prince arrived. Yes, that one sacked and pillaged the place. Now there are some locals sorting the world out. Now, I don't know if you've heard a blackbird at all during this uh, film, but um, I think we shall be tracking him down very shortly. A decade after the Black Prince arrived, it was again burnt down, but this time by a non-official gang of hooligans. That's the Maison de Consul, now a hotel, and those images are supposed to be local people at the time. They look a funny lot to me. Now, we'll walk right to the other end of the town, actually. And there is one of the original gateways. The only one left in its original condition. So, let's go back into the square. What have we here? Yes, there he is. Look, the French blackbird. Oh, I think he may have spotted the camera, gone very quiet. Yes, there it goes. I thought he'd seen the camera. He's trying to get out of sight now. Now, since the last time it was burnt down in the 14th century, it's been reasonably quiet. It was rebuilt as a Bastide, uh, very much in the condition that we see it today. But it's nearly time to catch our bus. Uh, we must get the bus back to Pamiers, from where we'll get the train back to Foix. And rather an exciting ride back into Pamiers. The bus turned up at the right place at the right time. Uh, but this time I had to pay the bus fare. The driver out to Mirepoix didn't have any change. Anyway, here we are in uh, Pamiers. Now that building with the tower there, the octagonal brick tower, is the cathedral. 
the Cathedral of San Antonio. Pamier has grown to be bigger than Foix and has always resented the fact that Foix was made the departmental capital after the 1789 revolution. The Count of Foix had annexed Pamier in 1111. It is believed that it got its name when the Count returned from the First Crusade and renamed it Castrum Apame after Apamia in Syria and hence Pamie. Now this is the other church of Notre Dame du Camp. Pamie had stayed loyally Catholic in the Cathar business and its bishop inquisitor became Pope Benedict the Twelfth. In the wars of religion it was largely trashed by the Protestants and both those churches have been largely rebuilt since they were destroyed there. Now here's our train back to Foix. Just a nice new little local train that carries cats and bicycles and runs on time. Now back at Foix and the train goes off now southwards back towards the Pyrenees. Right, I walk right up here from the station down there. All this high, all up stuff like this. I'm not even in yet. Right, I've come through the entrance, paid me money, climbed another uh, height as much as I already had done, and I'm still not at the top, still got to go up there yet. And uh, I've got to go up there and up there, in theory. Certainly get a good view of the town from up here. Not that I recognise any of it. I'm just having an amble around on this level first before going any further. I presume that's the lift that the count used to come up in. I doubt if he had to walk up where I've just walked up. It's no, another one of those circular stairs. I think I've been climbing about three hours now. Must end somewhere. I never thought I'd have to go in another one. <laughs> and yet here I am again. Whew, this is made out of wood. Oh, that looks promising. Whew. The false alarm is just a, a staging post. One of the floors used as a prison man up to it. And all the noises where the prisoners are all sound effects. Another staging post. Not that I expect to concentrate on all this. <coughs> I'm wondering, wondering why I've got strength to get down again, let alone further up. Light at the end of the tunnel. More uh, promising. <coughs> reminds me of some. Yes, being up here reminds me of that. Uh, <laughs> Feel nervously as a I never thought I'd be going up another one. Uh, 
and that's how far up we've come after doing all that climb. We're now at the top of this tower, that must be going up those other ones. Right, I've got my bearings now, that going diagonally across is the main street and you can see that uh, covered market there and then one of these buildings here is where I'm staying. And looking the other way, there's the station, which is a fair walk from the town centre. And there's that church I went in yesterday. still don't think that he walked up three or four miles or whatever it is of this lot every time he came out from work. I mean the height and the length is bad enough but walking up these giant round couples is quite, um, you know, difficult. <laughs> 